I'm Gloria Kenyon, Senior Public Programs Coordinator for the Smithsonian American Art Museum and Renwick Gallery, and I'm so delighted that you could be with us this evening. Um, as I noted, we are recording. We ask that you keep yourself muted and your camera off throughout the program so as to not distract other participants. The chat is open, so please use that to ask any questions or share any comments during this program. I'll read any questions you have for Timothy about the work allowed to make sure that he pauses and shares that information with you. Thank you all for your support of this program through your ticket purchase. This program was also made possible by a grant from the Smithsonian Women's Committee who provided financial support for all of the Renwick Invitational 2020 programs. If you ordered a kit, I hope it arrived safe and sound. This kit is what we're calling a starter kit to help you get the idea of what Timothy will walk you through this evening. He'll show us the basics of wire and beadwork as a foundation to get you started on your crafting journey. We encourage you to use this space and time to learn and experiment and then support your local craft supply store afterward to fill out your starter kit and continue your work. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Timothy Horn, an artist who creates exaggerated adornments that combine natural and constructed worlds. He works with traditional materials such as bronze and glass, as well as surprising ones like crystallized rock sugar. I hope that you all get the opportunity when we reopen to visit the Renwick to see his fantastic works in person. Timothy's wide ranging work centers on dialogues between nature and culture. He draws inspiration from historical objects, narratives, and ways of making, including European decorative arts and Baroque adornment. I'll now turn the program over to him so he can share more with you about his work. Welcome, Timothy. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to begin with just a brief run through of uh, work that I've made over the past 30 years and, um, and then we'll move into the workshop. Um, so I uh, just wanted to check, Gloria, you can, uh, oh, sorry, I need to go, go to screen share, don't I? Yes. Okay. Right, so um, as Gloria might have said, I'm, I'm from Australia. Um, I grew up in um, the southeast corner of Australia, the town of Melbourne. I um, went to art school thinking I was gonna become a jeweler and, um, but I really kind of found my voice uh, in the scale of sculpture. Uh, this is a, a body work I put together. It was my second solo show uh, back in 1992. Um, I made nine objects um, that were derived from historical objects, and some of them uh, were objects that appeared in um, old master paintings. And um, so I had this kind of, was developing this, this sort of maximalist, minimalist language um, using heavily adorned, uh, uh, using heavy ornament on objects. Um, but I cast all these uh, things in aluminum. Um, so it was like stripped of color and just using a sort of a silver tonal range. Uh, this orchestral harp is, uh, it's life size to a harp. So it's about uh, five and a half feet high. And it's based on a, a harp that was um, at Versailles in France. And uh, all the decoration was painted and I wanted to make, um, I, I wanted to reproduce that decoration, but in 3D. Um, so all the flowers, um, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like the harp is kind of springing to life. It was a bit of a self-portrait. Um, there's a, a mermaid and a, a seahorse um, on the bottom. And uh, at, at the time, um, I think I was probably making about six flowers a day. So this work, um, the body of work took about two years to, to create. So after that um, period, I uh, packed up in Melbourne and I moved um, to Europe and spent about five years on, off and on in Europe, traveling, working. Um, I didn't have a studio uh, during that time, but I did a lot of drawing and I became kind of, I don't know, fascinated uh, even though I hadn't studied jewellery, um, I was still fascinated by jewellery and ornament and made a lot of drawings during that time. 
I got back to Australia in 1996 and um, I applied for a, a glass program at the uh, Canberra School of Art and went to and, and spent um, four years studying glass um, in the glass workshop. So I was studying glass, but um, still kind of looking at jewellery. And um, I became obsessed by um, these um, patterns, uh, mid um, 17th century patterns, um, French origin uh, by a jeweller named Pierre uh, Gilles Le Garret. And um, so this is one of the first works I made um, uh, uh, reproducing that pattern. And at that stage, I was attempting to reproduce every detail that was in, in that drawing, um, the 17th century drawing. So this is cast, <clears throat> um, cast lead crystal and cast bronze that's nickel plated. This is that work um, appearing. Uh, this was my first solo show at the um, Knoxville Museum in Tennessee after I moved to the US, <clears throat> just to give you a sense of scale. So that piece was about uh, two and a half feet wide, the bow. Um, so during that time, I also, um, using that same bow pattern, I cut and pasted it into um, the, the, um, the form of this 18th century slipper. Um, so this is about uh, two and a half feet long and uh, a foot and a half high and the heel is solid crystal. That's um, the, the, the glass slipper appearing in an exhibition alongside with some other works. This was a show called the Cinderella Complex. So aside from um, <clears throat> looking at jewelry, I was also um, studying technique and uh, so 18th century technique and the rise of cost costume jewelry. And I was interested in um, how um, uh, the development of, uh, of um, artificial pearls on, on a commercial scale and trying to sort of um, bring that into uh, glass and um, create sculpture with it. Um, so these, these are amongst the first pearls that I made, uh, combining them with bronze and uh, cast lead crystal. So the process is to, to use an opaque color and um, stretch that color very thin and, um, and, uh, and then mirror the inside so that the color is, is obscuring the mirror. Those bands of, of color that you can see that are a little bit like um, have a sort of a Jupiter effect. Um, the, that's, that's the colour being stretched very thin and it's obscuring the mirror. The large pearl there, that's about, uh, to give you a sense of scale, that large pearl is about the size of a watermelon. It's uh, 16 inches long. Um, but it was really these two patterns that I became really obsessed with. And uh, they, these are again by um, uh, Gilles Le Garret, mid, mid uh, 17th century um, jewellery patterns. These are hair ornament patterns, so something that would have been attached to the front of a wig. And I, um, so I used these patterns and made, uh, re uh, reproduced them um, very, I've, I've reproduced them um, many times. And um, ag again, at this stage, I was um, still interpreting them very literally, trying to re reproduce every mark that was in the, in the original drawing. Um, again, uh, researching 18th century techniques, um, the, the, uh, these, this is clear cast crystal that's backed with gold foil, um, foiling of, of, of um, paste gems and diamonds was, was also a technique that was developed in the 18th century in order to match um, jewellery to costume. This is um, a purple version, so I've reversed the pattern and it's slightly larger. This piece is about four feet long, again with using purple foil. The detail. And this is the largest um, piece that I um, have made using that pattern. This piece is about uh, six and a half feet in, in length. Use, and just using um, plain um, 
the silver foil, not even Easter egg foil this time, just, just plain um, foil. Um, so uh, this is an image of the, the Great Barrier Reef um, where I, I made a visit um, back to Australia in 2008 and my partner and I went to the Barrier Reef and uh, spent a week snorkeling uh, around coral and fish and sharks and had a, had a kind of fabulous time. And when I got back to Australia, um, I had this idea of um, incorporating I wanted to incorporate natural form um, into these works and transpose them onto these very stylized um, 17th century um, forms of nature. So um, these are these are the, the, the first coral works that I made. These were um, exhibited back in uh, 2015. Scale of these, um, the, the, the one on the left is about um, seven feet high. And using um, the, the same pattern, uh, this time transposing um, it, uh, images of lichen onto that pattern. And this piece is called Tree, Tree of Heaven and it's one of the works that's currently in the exhibition um, at the Smithsonian. And um, using that same pattern, but, but stretched, um, stretched horizontally um, rather than uh, vertically this time. And a detail of this work. So another um, work that's uh, been of major influence um, to me with my work uh, is this beautiful screen by a Japanese screen painter uh, Kano Sensetsu, um, who was mid 17th century. And um, tragically, this, uh, this screen has kind of come down to us, not in its um, original version. Um, it was uh, commissioned for a, a monastery in Japan and there was a fire at the monastery and in order to pay for the fire, um, the, this um, screen was sold off and the new owner of the work, um, it didn't fit in their apartment. So they removed, they, they cut off um, several inches off the top and off the bottom, and um, which were then lost. Uh, but this work um, belongs to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And uh, it's I, the first time I saw it, it was just such, such a striking image of this um, ancient, uh, a twisted plum tree. So I wanted to use that um, in, in, in a work that I was making um, uh, three years ago for the Adelaide Biennial. And um, so I want to just walk you through some steps of um, just creating a piece. So I draft I, using um, Kano Sensetsu's um, image, I projected that on my wall and drafted a pattern and um, but then tr tr uh, translated it from coral into, uh, sorry, in, from, from a plum tree into coral forms. And then um, I cut, cut those forms up and reworked them into, an eight, into a 17th century um, earring pattern. Um, Again, this is like a, from floor to ceiling is uh, about seven and a half feet. So then um, uh, setting out to, to create the work, uh, modeling the forms in, in plasticine. And then um, uh, creating a, a rubber mold in, from which um, I can take a wax and then embed, embed that wax into a refractory mold and attach a wax screw, um, sprues and air risers, which are part of the, the, cast, the casting process. And then um, at the bronze casting foundry, um, the bronze is melted in a crucible and um, uh, any sort of impurities are scraped off 
and it's put into a raising device and then um, pour, the, the liquid bronze is poured into the moulds. So back in my studio with the, the rough bronze castings and um, begin this process of, of cleaning up and uh, creating a, a removing any, um, any uh, uh, inclusions that were um, cast into the work or part, part of the process, air bubbles um, or, or um, main, minor sort of faults in the mold and also creating a, a texture on the back of, of the casting. So it creates a sort of seamless effect. Um, so that, that process is called chasing and then I'm starting to put the work together. So using the same pattern that I drafted to create the models to then um, construct the piece and weld it together. Um, finally, uh, hang hanging work and I um, nickel plate these, these, these works rather than patinate them so, so that they have a silvery finish. And um, finally, Attaching, attaching the pearls and, um, and then ha hanging the work. So it's a, a detail of, uh, this, is, this piece is called Gorg Gorgonia 17. And um, this is the work along with several other works which appeared uh, at, at the um, Adelaide Biennial in 2018. So Moving on to this workshop, um, you've, some, some people have received a kit and um, other people have um, bought their own supplies. Um, so my idea is we can explore what, what we can do together using um, uh, jeweler's wire and, and some glass beads. So thinking about um, wire sculptures, um, uh, sculptures of Alexander Calder came to mind. These were early works that he made that were based on the circus and um, show his, his love for drawing and also his, his sort of uh, whimsical sense of humour. And I did a Google search of um, wire flowers and, and came up with these images, um, which I, I think are quite um, beautiful in, in their way and uh, things that in, inspired me to, to make some um, some test works and uh, in, with, with the addition of some beads. Um, but for this workshop, I, I came across this image of a René Lalique. Uh, uh, it's a corsage ornament um, made of um, silver and diamonds. And I wanted to use this, uh, this as a pattern or a, as a reference um, for this workshop. So I put it into Photoshop and um, just stripped out the color and I added a, a third um, branch to it. And then um, started breaking it down basically into forms. So just looking at this pattern, there are um, seven large blossom flowers and then a series of um, slightly smaller buds, and then um, four different sizes of, of buds um, going down to ones that are really quite tiny. So uh, thinking about trying to reproduce this using um, wire and pearls, um, I bought um, some strands of pearls in, in, in four different sizes. And then um, used using um, seed pearls as well as the, uh, the, the four different sizes, I started cr creating these um, blossom forms. So the ones on the right, that's the, the, the large, they, they represent the larger forms and uh, the, the blossoms on the left, um, the, 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 the slightly smaller ones. So, um, even if you don't have four different sides of beads at home, don't panic. Um, we're going to work through um, 
we, we're going to work through some options. So I think there's some there's something for everyone, or hopefully, uh, in this workshop. Um, so to create the the the, the branch structure, um, I've just used uh, jeweler's wire and and just a wrapping technique um, to uh, create a quite a quite a rigid structure. It's still got a bit of flexibility, but um, it, it's, it's, it's going to kind of hold, hold these, um, these works together. And then um, we're probably not gonna get to this. Uh, we're, we're, this, this I, I'm, I'm gonna confess right now, this took two days to make. So we're not gonna get this done um, in, in this um, short workshop this evening. But um, I, I'm, my, I'm hopeful that uh, I can inspire everyone at home to, um, to uh, use their wire and, uh, and use their beads and um, create something beautiful. So um, without any further to do, um, let's, I'm, I'm get going to, um, let's just pick up the workshop and, and get um, making some stuff. So, okay. Great. Um, I have spotlighted Timothy's hands for everyone to be able to see more clearly and crisply. Um, again, we do have a quick question about yeah. um, one of the early works you showed, mm -hmm. the harp, and there was yes. also the piano. Are the yes. instruments, uh, can you play them? Um, no, no. My, my intention was um, to, to create mute instruments. Um, so yes, they did have strings, but, but the strings were just... Um, brass wire. Great, thank you. All right, uh, again, folks, thank you so much for your questions in the chat and Timothy, continue. Yeah, okay. So I've, um, I've made several um, uh, works uh, just in different sta stages of process um, that I'm gonna kind of walk, walk you through. Um, and as I said, I had created four different sizes of small pearls and um but i'm gonna i'm just and I'm, I'm i think i'll begin just by demoing um how how i made these so taking right so i'm just going to take some of my jeweler's wire and cut off at about um three inches and then using um, the needle in those pliers to just bend around and form a um, just a little um, eyelet on the end of it and that's going to be the top and then uh, just threading on some seed pearls one of these pearls. And then just a second um, seed pearl. Timothy, we have a quick question. Um, yeah. There's a mention about wire gauge. Are there different wires for different uh, as different crafts and different aspects of things? Like uh, yes. So I I ended up buying um, three gauges of wire. Um, the, the main gauge that I'm using is, is gauge 22 and, um, but I also bought some 24, which I, uh, probably won't be using tonight, but, but all, but, um, I also bought some 20 gauge, which is a, a little bit heavier. And, uh, I used some of that for the structure of the, um, tree. So if you're inspired to buy, buy some wire, um, that we'll be really just using the 22 and, um, and the, and the 20, which is slightly heavier. Thank you. So I've just created a, a second little eyelet on, um, on that little piece of wire. And the eyelets, they're gonna kind of be our, like our building, our building blocks for, for building the forms that we make tonight. So I'm threading that onto, onto that length. 
and then using my needle nose pliers I'm just going to pinch it and then just twist wire around so so that's that's a number that's like a number two pearl I'm calling this my number one pearl this is the tiniest and um, I'll just make another one of those using a larger pearl so just twisting around on the, using the end of the um, needle nose pliers using the needle nose pliers just to straighten the, the eyelet on the end of the wire <coughs> and just threading on um, a seed pearl. So I've just got a, a bowl of seed pearls to pick from. And then I'm gonna put one of my number four, a large pearl on this piece. One more seed pearl. And then, then just a shorter length to secure it. So just on the right on the tip of the needle nose plier. And then just snipping off that excess. <clears throat> right. So, um, so in addition to these pearls, we're going to make some petals. I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of petals. So. Can you hold that up for us so we can see a little bit more yeah. of what your method is, please? Sure, and I'll just explain. So I'll explain what that's going to be. So using that gauge 22 wire, um, I'm going to create two sizes of, of blossom, one large and one small. And uh, so to explain this, <clears throat> so the, 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 um, the section that's going to be pearled using seed pearls is going to be an inch and three quarters for the large blossom and um, then for the petals on the small blossoms that area there is going to be pearled and that's about an inch in in length <clears throat> so i'll explain what i mean by that so i'm going to cut about uh, four inches of wire create an eyelet on the end and and then rather than and then I'm going I'm threading um, seed pearls onto this wire and rather than have to count out the pearls the seed pearls for each petal I'll just hold it against that measurement. So this is slow, meditative, meditative work, I would say. Okay, just a couple more. So all of these materials, yeah, I just got them from um, our local craft store, Hobby Lobby. Okay, so I've got, um, See, I've got, I've got enough pearls that kind of um, meet that measurement. 
And then holding the, the eyelet up, just gonna bend it towards the, bend the tail of the wire towards the eyelet, pass it through. And then using the, the pliers to hold it, just pull on that tight. And that's, that's a petal. So I'll make another one of those. <clears throat> I'll make a, a smaller one for our second size petal. So cutting about three inches of wire using the end of the needle nose pliers to create that eyelid. The eyelid's not closed all the way. You can use your pliers to just crimp, crimp that down. Just straighten that up. So I'm only looking for an inch here. And Timothy, I'm gonna ask, um, as you are finishing off this pedal, could you um, slow down just a bit and maybe hold it up toward the camera so sure. folks can really see the detail that goes into that. Thank you. So again, just holding that um, so that eyelets um, facing away and bending, threading that through using the needle nose pliers and you just pull that tight and that's a smaller petal. So the, the larger blossom that's um, created using um, one of the larger petals, a large pearl that's attached, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. And then a, um, a number three pearl uh, um, with seed pearls on the side as the center. So just take a, this is one of the large pearls, and we're going to create a little um, piece to hold that in place. So I'm just cutting a small amount, just two inches of the, um, the wire, twisting it around. And this time, instead of grab, grabbing it right on the end and trying to make a small hole as possible, um, I'm gonna make this eyelet um, a little bit larger. So I'm gonna hold it up just so you can see there's a little bit of extra um, wire poking through on this end. And so I'm gonna bend it over and I'm not gonna bend it all the way. I'm not gonna close it up because I need to be able to slip that over the end of the pedal. It's like you're creating a hook. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, just an open hook. So I wanna find uh, the middle of, of my pedal and sometimes um, it's going to look like the, you know, there might there might be a seed pearl right in the middle. Don't worry about that. Just choose whatever feels like the middle. That's that's pretty good. And I'm going to just multitask with my fingers here. Use that as a clamp, and then just press that down. Let's close down. So it can take a little while to, a little bit of practice 
um, took me a couple of goes to get rolling. So be patient with yourself. And then thread that pearl on. Position it between the pedal. And then holding, just holding the whole thing, the pedal between my thumb and forefinger. It's going to twist, twist that round as, as close as I can get it to the top. Just, just once all the way around. And then snip that tail off. So that's petal number one for our blossom. So I'm going to take yeah, that's a number two pearl. And I'm going to take my petal. And just twist. And you don't have to use all the wire. Just enough to know that it's feeling good and secure, it's not going to twist around. And be, just be careful you don't snip off the, the tail of, of, the, of the blossom, you want to be cutting off um, the petal excess. So just take the white cutters, snip that off. Okay, so that's, that's Blossom center and one one petal. So I've got I, I've got um, some extra. I've got my extra four petals already made. So I'm going to attach these. So that's number two. All right, I'm just going to undo that because I didn't quite get it high enough. So I'm just going to reposition it. That's better. Getting it nice and high. So the great thing about wire, it's so it's it's it is flexible. Um, this wire is annealed, um, which means which means it's been preheated, so it's softened it up, it gives you a firm amount of flexibility. So you can, it's, it's going to allow you to make a couple of twists before it starts to toughen up. And um, when it does toughen, it becomes brittle and, uh, and it will break. So there's a, it's, it's only going to have so much bend in it. If it, if it breaks, it, just, it breaks, cut it off and, and create, create another piece. And these little excess pieces, they can, if, they, if they're long enough, they can be reused for um, attaching a pool or something like that. So that's four petals.
Okay, so that's our blossom. So now that we've made a blossom, what can we do with this? Right. Well, I think these um, the, the 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 back of it actually could be twisted. It could it could be reduced, uh, um, or and I I made this intentionally, kind of bringing the wire down. But if it, if I'd fold the wire up closer to the base of it, um, it means that there would be less. If, if we created less of a tail on the back, um, these these could be um, used for anything really, like um, you know earrings. Um, uh, Uh, I love a brooch. Multiple uses, yeah. Brooch, brooch for sure. We could uh, put a put a backing onto it and make a little brooch. Um, so I'm going to just jump back in with the. So I've got a couple of um, uh, blossoms already made, and um, and I'd like us to kind of get to that at, at, at stage where we started attaching them to the. Um, to the branch that we have. Um, but first I'll just demo the smaller, the smaller blossom. And so for the, for the large blossom, I've used a, a number three pearl. And for the smaller blossom, I've used a, a number four pearl. So, so it's, it's bigger. Um, I just felt like it, it, uh, it was a, a nice contrast. Um, against these smaller petals. So again, just um, holding those two up together and twisting those on. Cut off the excess. So this is just going to have three petals on it. So just trying to get that petal positioned nice and close to the top. And that should be enough to hold it in place. So that's, that's our smaller blossom. <clears throat> right, so moving on to the attaching stage. So um, again, I've just used, um, I used two type two gauges of wire. I've used the 20, what, 20 gauge and the 22 gauge to start making this branch and fleshing it out. So to create the, I'll, I'll bring up the, um, so this is my my pattern that I printed out, and I, I can forward this to Gloria. I'll forward the image to Gloria, and um, maybe Gloria, if you've got uh, if you've got people on the email list um, who signed up who want this, um, we can just um, email it out if people want that. I can do that. I'll drop the email in the chat for folks to send it to. Okay, great. So um, I don't. So I'm just kind of using this as a rough guide to go by. Um, and so I started with this this end of the end of the branch, um, cutting just cutting some lengths of um, of the of the twenty gauge, and then binding that just into into like a little um, element there. And then I added um, a couple more strands and just started slowly building building the form up. And I'll, I'll show you what that's like. So taking taking a length of wire and um, 
I'll uh, I'll I'll add add on to this piece. This, so I'm going to add just um, thicken this up slightly. So I'm just twisting that around. And it's um, so by doing this, I'm just adding a bit more body to the branch, but I'm also uh, going to add a little bit more structure to um, these radiating branches. So holding that against my um, my pattern. This, this branch is going to support three blossoms. And so um, I think this one here is going to be, is going to run the, the full length. So I don't need it quite that long. So I'm going to just cut that off. And I'm, I'm just going to create an extra two. And when you're wrapping, are you trying to do it evenly? Do you want to create texture um, both to create um, support? What's yeah, that, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'm, I I, it, I I don't want it too even because then it's going to look really mechanical. So I want this still to have a very organic feel to it. So there's no right or wrong really. Although I think if you do it too loose, then it's not it's it's not going to add any structure. So it, you want it to have um, some integrity, and so the, you, I, I would. I'd be aiming to, to get it on there nice and tightly, but then don't be too mechanical. Don't it's not like making a series of jump links where you're lining the wire up with with, with each each successive loop. You want to sort of be a little bit more free and organic with it. <clears throat> so to create um, like something, what I've done here, I'm just going to start here bend that out and then I can bend it back onto itself. Let me just close that up with the pliers. And then and then wind this back on the branch. And so I just wanna kind of do that a couple of times to just kind of build that branch up. But we're gonna be attaching the flower, a flower form to this. So we don't want it too thick, otherwise it's gonna to get too heavy too quickly. It's always, I think it's, it's probably um, a good thing to think about um, adding something and then you can always add a little bit more wire to it if you, if you just want to um, thicken it up. And I, I think also one of the keys to kind of creating an organic feeling is, is, is variation. So variation probably in, in wire. Um, I'm using the, tw the 20, uh, two ga 22 gauge to, to wrap around. Um, but um, if you, if you uh, and and that's covering the the, the twenty tw the, sorry the, the twenty, um, which which is is quite heavy this stuff. Um, okay, so I'm going to start. Ideally, um, if we had, if we had plenty of time, I, the, the 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 sequence that I would do this in, um, I would add all the smallest components first. So looking looking at the pattern, I would add all the tiny blossoms first and work from small to big. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add, start adding a couple of blossoms. Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to bend this, this back on itself.
Okay, so I'm going to add this little blossom. And I've got a, a fair bit of tail, so I can kind of wrap that round to get it started. And then use the, use the, the rest of the, the tail, push that back down, to just, I can hold it with my pliers too. And then finish it off, holding with the pliers. So bending that tail end around just right on the end in order to get it to tuck in nicely. So rather than having sort of um, straight ends kind of sticking out, curving them is, allows them to sort of fold in a little bit easy. And so it I'm seems gonna, like when you started that, you started a little bit down from the pearl itself and wrapped that part around first and then brought the end back around, correct? Yes, that's that's correct, yeah. So I'll, put, I'll add this one, a, a number two pearl. So I'm just gonna hold it in place. So I'm just going to bring this piece in into view. So this is what we're, we're aiming for, ultimately. All right, so that's two pearls on. And um, so at this stage, I would want to start bringing more wire down and so I'm going to tuck a little piece of wire in here. I just tucked it through that, that that piece of the armature. And I'll just bring this wire down just to start creating a little bit more structure. And then that little leftover tail, I'm going to curl the end of it to, to begin with now. And then just wrap that back on itself. And then we're going to add a larger blossom. So I don't think I used um, any of the big, the large pearls as separate blossoms. I think I've just used the ones, the twos, the threes, and then the four appears in the in the in the the, the second blossom and um, the smaller blossom, and then the um, a, a number three pearl is is in these larger blossoms. So. This has got a nice kind of um, twig-like feel to it. I'm just going to reinforce that with an extra piece of wire. And just a tw the 22. And um, the great thing about wire is it's it's flexible. So if something's in your way when you're starting to put things together, you just can slip, just gently bend it out of out of your way. And even this one, I can straighten it this way. It's just going to make it a little bit easier easier for me to work with. And um, I'm going to thread this through there. Just it just give me something to get started with. 
and then just slowly bending that around and then bring it up that little stalk back down again just bending that end in and the same with this end they're, they're quite sharp they can be a bit sharp these wire ends so um, it's, it's also going to help protect your fingers um, you'll, you'll spike yourself um, if those wires are exposed too much Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more wire. I'm going to use sort of a little bit of 22, uh, sorry, a little bit of 20 wire just to create a little bit more structure, a bit more body on, on that branch. And then um, you just begin winding it down. Okay, so that's a little bit more rigid. And, um, <clears throat> and then uh, I'll attach a larger blossom. So I'm going to cut off, it's like a good 10 inches maybe. And um, so I've still got the tail on the end of that blossom. I'm going to bring this wire up to about there. And I'll just loop that under to start off with and wind that back down there. Now just poking that bit of wire through. We'll bend everything else out of the way. And then I want to just wrap this, certainly beginning, in the beginning, doing it for quite tightly. So um, it's giving it strength. And just on those ends, just Curving those in. And I'm going to reinforce, as you can see, it's quite, it's, it's how it, aesthetically it needs, it needs to be thicker on, on where, where that, um, where that little branch begins. So again, just cutting another 10 inches or so. And everything else out of the way. And I'm going to start on this branch.
Okay, let me just start winding up, not all the way. I'm going to start heading back down now. I'll tuck this piece in so it doesn't get tangled. Okay, so um, so that's our first big blossom. Um, I think that's that's looking pretty good here. Um, this needs to be still fattened up a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to add a, um, a blossom. So I've got a small blossom. Uh, I've got the smallest smallest pearl, uh, uh, pearl number two. Um, the second, this small blossom. I'm going to add um, another of this size. Again, yeah. while we start with the uh, small blossoms, um, I'm st generally started. It's it's easier to if you start with the the smaller components, um, then they're going to be less in the way. Um, when it comes to adding the big ones. So looking at the, at the ideal scenario is to look at your overall pattern, figure out um, what's gonna be the smallest elements and attach those first. And um, the, the, the larger, bulkier ones, as you try and sort of wind wire, wire around, um, you're gonna, it, it's gonna become more of a problem to, um, if, if you've added your larger pieces first, then you're going to be kind of working around those larger components. So you, it's, 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 I think it's just easier if you start with a smaller and then, and then kind of work up. Great, thank you so much. So I'm going to um, add this little piece here as a, as a little blossom. So I'm just going to wind that on first. <clears throat> and then starting with the branch first, just thread that through. Just a loop on the branch. And I can bend, bend this back out the way. Just to give, and this big flower I can do the same, just bend that over a little bit, just to give me a little bit more access to that. So I'm going to just go up that once more. So it's, it's certainly, it's on there, it's really strong. What I'm adding wire really just for, um, for, for, for the visual, just to bulk it out a little bit so it doesn't look so it looks like it should be there. And then I'm going to continue back up this way just to bulk this out a little bit. And then I've got a little bit of excess tail there. Just bend that around. Curl it in. So um, let's talk about this area here as well. Um, to try and create that, that really nice um, element 
here, we just kind of bind a little bit more wire around this. So I'm going to start with some, um, you can use the 22, but I'm, I'm going to start with a little bit of 20 uh, just hey, because. You, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a question it. about the wire color uh, yep. because they, uh, one of our attendees really likes the contrast. Mm. And they said, what is the actual color of the wire? Um, it's, it's called vintage bronze color. And uh, all the wire that I got um, was actually uh, in this in this vintage. Uh, it was either vintage bronze or vintage brass, and they both look pretty much identical. So I either really will do. Excellent, thank you. And I do want to just uh, get, let you know we are at an hour, uh -huh. um, but folks are still interested and still hanging. Okay. Um, okay. So um, just yeah, wanted to give you that quick right. time check. But yeah, yeah tell thank us more you. about making this uh, final piece. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep um, winding wire around and just slowly build up that form. So this I guess this method, you know, I mean, this is, this is like, th this method has been used for, for probably centuries to make, to, to make armatures, you know, for, for figurative sculptures, all, all sorts of purposes. Um, and uh, so even just like, um, you know, when, when Gloria and I were talking about what we could do for, for a workshop, and, and we were sort of thinking of doing something that was botanical based, and, um, and, 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 but also aligned with jewelry. Um, it, it just, you know, wire is something that I used when I was at college and I still kind of use it um, uh, occasionally in, in work, but not, not for something like this. And um, I don't know, I've, I've really enjoyed this whole process of, it's, it's, it's helped me kind of rediscover a, um, a material, but also, and a process, but also align it with something like beads. So um, it's I've really I've really enjoyed um, just this week of um, figuring out you know what what to do with the material and uh, and what what we can do together. So. And while you're wrapping, we have another question. Yeah. Um, when you do the coral inspired pieces, do you get that effect with a different texture or with different forms? Um, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Sure. I, yeah. Um, how do you get the effect with the texture in your coral pieces as opposed to this? So this is with wire uh, right. coral yes. pieces. How yes. are you doing that? The coral pieces, well, that's that's a modelled form. So I'm using plasticine um, to create um, to create the model. So I'm um, I, I showed a slide earlier um, of some of the models that are on a flat board, and um, so I'm just uh, yeah mod modelling plasticine directly and creating all that texture just using clay tools. Great, thank you. All right, I'm going to add, a, add another little length of wire. I'm just going to try and Gently hanging there somewhere. Okay. 
So I'm just going to, I started wrapping that up, but I'm also going to go back down. And then start going back up again. And I don't, I don't even mind um, those little kind of ends exposed so much at the top. Um, they kind of have a little bit of a feeling of the, 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 the break in this branch. So um, I'll leave those exposed for the moment. And if, if, they, if they look resolved, um, then they'll, they'll stay. And I guess if they, if they just look unfinished, then they'll, they'll get done. Um, submerged in more into the form of more wire. <clears throat> it's like wire can cover up everything. It is. <laughs> um, you know, there's this really nice little detail in the pattern here, just of a, a little kind of the beginning of a branch that was locked off. Um, so I created a little loop of wire, uh, which I'm going to bind some wire around and just start that. You can see it's <clears throat> in this piece here oh yeah can you show us that whole can you pan that across yeah, because this course. is amazing i'd love people to really see the details and you said this took you what, two days two days yeah so i made all the parts to begin with so i made all the blossoms and um then i started making the structure and then i started adding so working from the extremities and, and, and working in. So I added all the smaller parts and that way it enabled me to add, add um, the small pearls without making, without, without in, if, if I, and the, the structure was very, still quite linear and quite thin. And um, so I didn't want to be bulking up the the structure too much to begin with. It's 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 easier to add than to take away. So I was wrapping these um, forms working from the extremity, and that was creating that. Um, it was determining the thickness of the branch, what the what the overall thickness was going to be, and then I was and I was allowing that to sort of inform then the overall thickness of of the, of the piece. Fantastic. So, you know, a form like this with this this sort of elbow form. Um, when I I I finished this and um, and then I looked at it again today and it, it it kind of it needed a little bit more. So I kind of just added uh, and just kind of created tried to create a sort of slightly more knobbly form that would appear in nature. My wire crafting is never this tidy. I'm <laughs> um, we did have a question that yeah. um, I think is one that comes up often, mm -hmm. um, especially when one's work is at the Renwick Gallery, the kind of craft wing of the Smithsonian American Art Museum. And do you see a line between art and craft? Do you think that it's... Um, a uh, hard line, a soft line, there isn't one, it all blends together. What, what, is, what are your thoughts around that? Um, oh boy. Well, you know, I mean, historically speaking, um, artists um, did what they had to do to kind of get by. And, you know, if, if you look at um, Leonardo da Vinci, he was um, a painter and a sculptor and a uh, fireworks designer and um, a, a scientist and so you know um, I, I think it's I think what we like to do is um, we're very 
good at institutionalizing things and saying, well, you, this, this is, you know, this is what you did. So this is who you are. And um, I, um, I don't know, I find myself falling into that trap very easily and thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm just a sculptor or, or, or something. And, um, but, um, but, you know, uh, but, but then some people say, well, but you're a glass artist or, you, or you're now that now I'm going to be a, 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 a sort of fake jeweler, I guess. So um, I, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I love drawing and I wish I could paint. I, I'm colorblind, so I really um, have, have trouble with color and certainly painting everything tends to sort of turn khaki very quickly. So, um, uh, but um, I, I don't know, you know, like, I, I mean, the, the, the name a Renaissance man or woman, um, you know, was really is, is about someone who, who um, likes to work in a, in a cross disciplinary way. And um, so, I don't know, I, I think, um, you know, and then there's, there's this sort of conceptual art, which is not object based. Um, so I think, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not so interested in, I, I think I'm interested in um, overlaps rather than and 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 sort of um, expanding rather than kind of closing things closing things down. So uh, excellent and, and and narrow and 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 narrowing the, the definition of of um, what's our what's our art and what's craft. I guess I agree completely. I mean, craft is, it's, it's something that's just really important. You know, I like, I really enjoy making things. And, um, you know, I've often heard it said that skills aren't something that are really kind of valued in, anymore. Um, that, that um, especially, you know, in, in the contemporary art world. Um, although I'm not even sure that that's 100% true. You know, that, that, that it seems like, things you know uh, things come in waves and oscillate and um, certainly when I was at art school um, a, a lot of skills had been lost or just kind of misplaced temporarily and it was really um, it, when, when I was studying sculpture back in the sort of um, mid to late 80s um, yeah, there wasn't, I didn't really have access to a lot of technical information. And um, so I had to find it or, um, or it had to be outsourced. Like my teachers would say, well, we ne we'll need to bring in a casting sculpture, sculptor expert to kind of help you with your problem. Um, so, uh, but we, we've certainly been on this wave of craft revival. And, um, uh, and so, you know, a lot of the work that you'll see in galleries and art fairs is very well crafted and um, which is, which is great, I, I think. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to keep winding, uh, just trying to build up that funny little twig area. And I think once we do this, we'll probably wrap up the workshop. Great. Um, no pun intended in wrapping up. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to wire that back on itself.
Okay. That's a great start. Do you have on hand, you got a similar packet to those who ordered a packet. Could you show them just what you were able to do? Oh yeah, okay, um, sure. Um, so I got, so uh, Gloria sent me a package with some really tiny little beads, these beautiful little glass beads. And I, um, I this, this, this was sort of trying to figure out um, flower forms. Um, so using my trusty little guides, um, I think I use this larger blossom length here, which is one, one and a quarter inch. And um, exactly using exactly the same little eyelet technique and um, threading the beads on and then threading the, the, the tail of the wire back through and pulling that through. And um, then I, we had some lovely little sort of natural pearls that I used as the center of the flower and then just bound those around. Um, you can also use, I mean, this is just like ba basic, um, uh, you know, that these eyelets are really just the, 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 the basis of, of all um, jewelry. Um, so I, th these were some, some of the Swarovski crystals and, and beads and I just alternated them and made a strand. Um, a couple of other things I made, just trying to sort of figure out where, which direction to go in, uh, was this, this flower form with a kind of little domed flower. Just using the petals and then bringing all of, and, and these are just eyelets, eyelets either end, th uh, bending them, attaching them to a, a circle of, of wire and, um, and then just attaching that on winding the, the wire around. It's so so many exciting possibilities. Yeah. Thank you so much, Timothy. This was really exciting and really amazing to watch you work. Thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge with us. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been really <clears throat> fun for me. And I think I'm going to go get some beads and some wire. Um, I know I have some old earrings I saved for this. So I think I'm going to take those apart. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you for your wonderful comments, for your questions, for your feedback. Uh, we are just so delighted you were able to join us. This is the first time we've offered a program like this. So we really appreciate your support of our programs. If you enjoy crafting workshops, we have a handy hour on April 14th, uh, featuring duct tape uh, led by me, Gloria Kenyon. Um, so it's free of charge. Just supply your own duct tape. If you want to live the handy hour life uh, that you miss, bring your own beer or beverage of your choice. And we thank you again for joining us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you at our next program. Thank you, Timothy. And thank you all. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, everyone. Take care.